Imagine you are out in the countryside driving on a warm, sunny spring day. You have the windows open, the birds are singing, and you smell shit. <laughs> Every year, farmers spread shit on their fields in order to fertilize their soils. Um, but actually, the fresh or the natural cow manure is not a very good fertilizer. So, increasingly, around the world, in many regions, farmers regard it as such a poor fertilizer that they don't bother spreading it. The result is mountains of manure, constituting a considerable environmental problem. More than 22 million tons of ammonia is lost from livestock farms around the world every year. That's an emission problem. At the same time, on the other hand, without nitrogen fertilizer produced from fossils, merely 40% of the world population could be kept alive on today's diet. We want to fundamentally improve global food production. We want to enable farmers to recirculate their nitrogen, to prevent the loss of nitrogen, the loss of ammonia, and to make farmers produce their own fertilizer from manure, air, and renewable energy. This is possible now in our time because the cost of producing renewable energy is plummeting. So with renewable energy and some element of some fascinating new technology, I'll explain to you what we do. I start from a macro perspective. Um, and as you can see, this is a cow. <laughs> this cow eats grass. And in the grass, we have the nitrogen. The paradox is that when the cow, at the end of its life, end up at the slaughterhouse, only 10% of the nitrogen is part of the meat and the milk that has been produced through the cow's life. The rest of the nitrogen is wasted, and it's part of the manure. And from this manure, 30% of the nitrogen evaporates to air. 10% of the nitrogen runs off into water, and 1% to 2% of the nitrogen disappears as laughing gas, N2O. And even if the percentage here is really low, laughing gas is a climate gas 300 times stronger than CO2. So everyone occupied with agriculture works are very concerned about laughing gas. In total, this is, explains why in manure, the, the manure contains too little nitrogen to serve as an efficient uh, fertilizer in its raw form. It has lost all of this. For the farmer, this is a nutrition loss. For society at large, this is polluting or very polluting emissions with a very, very bad smell. Harmful to livestock and harmful to man. But if we take the, the farmer's perspective, he has lost these nutrients. So when he spread the manure in his field in order to grow new grass, he has to replenish the nitrogen he has lost. And the farmer does that approximately here 50%. The farmer does this by purchasing mineral fertilizer produced from fossil gas or coal in North Africa, the Middle East, or in China. This is a cost for the farmer. This is how the world is fed. The solution, to, and I have to add, this is a really good business model for the fertilizer companies. Every year you lose all of this, and since the world needs food, you produce all of this. Every year this happens. So what could the solution be? If we were able to take the manure and enrich it with the needed nutrients and, put, and, and then convert it into fertilizer-grade manure, that could be a solution. And on the farm, where the farmer produces the food, we have 
what is needed to do exactly that. We have the air. And in air, it's 78% nitrogen, and it's 21% uh, oxygen. When we take this air, we channel it into a plasma reactor with an electric arc. The electric arc takes the air, dissolves, splits the molecules, recombines them in order to create NO gas. The reactor is the size of a refrigerator. It's installed on the farm, in the stable, and it runs on electricity. Primarily, or preferably, green electricity, but any kind of electricity will work. Nowadays, when farmers have windmills in their fields, they have solar panels on their roofs, they have biogas plants in their, their stables, and since we started working on this technology in 2010, the price of solar energy today is one-fourth of what it was eight years ago. And this is continuing. The price of locally produced electricity is plummeting. That gives, this trend really gives the basis for an agricultural revolution. The NO can be used for many different applications. I get back to some of them. But the lowest hanging fruit is the livestock uh, farmer. If we take the NO gas coming out of the plasma reactor, we take it into the manure. We let the NO react with the ammonia, and we create a salt, a stable, storable salt, ammonium nitrate. When we create ammonium nitrate, we can influence the pH. That's a really important thing if you think about phosphates or other things to dissolve in the manure. But most of all, when this happens, we eliminate the ammonia loss. When we eliminate the ammonia loss, we have em eliminated the, the farmer's loss of nutrients. And then he no longer needs to purchase or to replenish his nitrogen, so he can eliminate his largest variable cost on the farm. In this way, the farmer recirculates nitrogen on his farm. He takes the fossil element out of the world's food production. He transforms a major climate gas emission source from the back of the cow into recirculated nitrogen. And for every ton of nitrogen he produces in his plasma reactor, he fixes one ton of ammonia here. That's really good news for the farmer. It's good news for the world food production, and it's really good news for the climate. In addition, in addition to the livestock part of this, um, if we are talking about a biogas plant, a biogas plant has a biorest. If we, and in many cases, that's just treated as organic waste. If we add the nitrogen to the biorest, the biogas plant has gotten a second revenue stream. And the large volumes of organic waste that's now only dumped as trash could be used as fertilizer. It didn't, we would avoid the transport and we would ab avoid the cost of getting rid of it. In combination of solar farms, in the parts of the world where sun is abundant, in Asia, in, in Africa, where the batteries are filled up, the sun is still shining, you have a plasma reactor, you produce the liquid fertilizer, you have it there where the farmer needs it in order to grow soils. In combination with sewage, tr sewage treatment, it's important. In Norway, we have the fish farming. There's a lot of organic waste from the fish farming. It constitutes a lot of phosphates. If we could add the nitrogen, it's a great source, a great resource. We turn the waste into the value. But everything here comes down to the agronomic value of what we are producing. Um, this summer, uh, a number of, um, of test installations and agronomic validations were done. Um, we did it in, in the UK, in Denmark, and in Norway. We did it in cooperation with universities and with um, independent validators. We installed our reactor at the, at the Bingham farm in Northern Ireland. We produced enriched fertilizer from 
the manure of the, the milking cows at George Bingham's farm. And we spread it, we made test field plots out in his field to grow grass. We compared our enriched manure with standard industrial fertilizer and with untreated manure. And I'm very pleased to reveal uh, that the plot with the enriched fertilizer outperformed the alternatives, proving the concept. We did the same or a parallel um, testing in Denmark at the farm with 50,000 pigs, uh, where he was producing barley in his fields. That was an interesting exercise as well. And now, later this month, we will be sending our first test reactor to South Africa uh, to run tests at the Fair Cape farm um, during their winter, or no, their summer, uh, our winter. Um, and we do this in cooperation with Stellenbosch University and with local partners. And the objective is to gain as much experience as we can with this, the African soil and the African produce. What we do now is to continue our testing, to continue optimization of this, this idea, this, this uh, technology. In essence, what we are, are doing, we combine four moves into one. We substitute chemistry with plasma. We substitute, for the second one, we substitute the Hobbit Bosch, the fossil technology, with the electric arc. The third thing we do is we combine the resource accounting from organic farming with the crop sizes from traditional farming. And the last thing, we take advantage of the falling cost of renewable local energy, and we use that advantage into creating distributed process industry. We disrupt the fertilizer value chain. We turn it from, we go from a linear model to a circular model. A shift in agriculture enabled by local renewable energy. And we, we change the world in another way, too. If you drive past the test farms, you will notice something interesting. Remember, I, I, I said that when we use this process to enrich the manure, use the plasma reactors, we remove the smell. And not only that, we make manure smell like dark chocolate. <laughs> Thank you.